have to look at the idea of any government that is faced with the people who are trying to assert themselves uses the medium of drugs to destroy that community. Some cases in point, we're going to look at the American Indian, we're going to indigenous people here, we're going to look at some alcohol, the bad alcohol that was sold and given in exchange for uh, furs or whatever it was that they traded, but what was the consequence of that? But the end of people became alcoholic, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it had an impact. When we were in China, when the English tried to sell Chinese Indian opium, the Chinese said no, the Indian opium had been Chinese, Japanese, British, by force of power, put it in their nation, and the impact that opium had hundreds of thousands of Chinese. Okay. What was the consequence of that? The disruption of that nation. So, so to assert then that crack, heroin, etc., are used as means of, 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 of subjugating us as a people and adding a temptation to our children for fast money because they don't necessarily see the long way is necessarily a role that's going to give them what they need to have. And that's something that we have to do that illusion that non quick money is necessary is not always necessary in this way. Okay, but we understand that the conditions drive this, the people make the choices with the conditions that they're presented with. Okay? So we have to question all of this in terms of trying to find remedies, solutions, and alternatives to how do we first deal with the realities of young people being in the institutions, which is not everybody, but also how do we prevent kids that we have now from ending up in that feeder system, because that's what it is. It is a feeder, feeder system that starts from juvenile to jails to prisons, okay? And if you sat down with anybody who's been through that system, somewhere in that, somewhere in that shape or form, they've been in one of those boxes one of those tracks that ultimately led them to long-term incarceration. We have to also deal with what, what does long-term incarceration mean to women who are convicted, as I understand it, of the fastest growing group of, of inmates uh, who have children that they must be, be behind, or children that are born uh, uh, with them in prison, and where do those children go? And if, if, if a mother's, in all, in all the formative years of that child's life, if the mother's away, how then, does, what, what, what are the social problems or community problems that result as a result of being in that type of system? Um, the, the, the other point is, and, and this is my last point, the other point is, is that one has to question again whether this is about justice or whether it is about hegemonic control and domination. And I will put a check mark on control, hegemony, and domination because we as a people are a threat. Okay? We've always been a threat. And as you look at our history and our interaction with white supremacy, it's always been a question of how can we control them. But in the age of Obama, they seek to do things more subtly. And this is where people get bored to sleep because you don't see the invisible hand. Okay? You don't see the puppeteer. In the post-record. Right. The so-called post-record. Absolutely. Okay, so there is no more white supremacy. There is no more so-called racism. There is no more institutional white supremacy. All these things have gone away because we have a black president. And I can believe that. I'd like to say three bridges that I own downtown for a buck, okay? But that's the irony and the paradox of the situation that under this African-American president, who is president of America, we are still in the same condition. And, and you, one would think,